Before Frank shouts at me and says it wasn't entertaining, it was boring, I'm going to go to Jules first and say, look, at least you had six goals. Anyone who watched England would have taken one. And that's right, and I think England were even worse than France. But the truth is, France didn't play well at all for the first 40 minutes of the game and miraculously were ahead at half-time. Uh, despite Croatia playing really well in that first half, he was a bit better at times in the second half. But I think this team is still trying to, to adapt and to learn how to play in this new formation, new system in the 3-4-1-2 with Antoine Griezmann as a number 10. I'm far from convinced that this is a good position for him, but he played there again tonight. was slightly better than against Sweden at the weekend. Um, so there were some good things again and some very negative things, I thought, but at least we saw... Uh, Dayoto Opamecano at the back getting more minutes and, and, and especially the debut for Eduardo Camavinga at 17 and 303 days, becoming the youngest player since 1914 wow. to make his debut for France and what a prodigy he is as well and how good he looked tonight. Uh, Frank, of course, played in that side. Frank, you take a look at uh, Camavinga and what impressed me so much is that he had, the, he had such a positive effect on everyone around him. He just seemed to lift everybody, which is quite something for a 17-year-old debutant. Yes, uh, exactly, Daniel. It's, uh, it's why I think he's exceptional. Uh, as soon as he comes uh, on the field, you can feel that he, he brings something very positive to the, to the squad, uh, changes the rhythm of the squad, making the right choices to make sure that the, the, the old uh, team will go forward and will, uh, uh, um, will pace up. Uh, any actions that they, they want to achieve. So that's, that, that, that's him. And I said that last week when he came on with Rennes on the first day of the Ligue 1 against Lille, where he came also on for 30 minutes and, uh, and changed the pace of the game, the reason of the game, the mentality of the players, and Rennes came back and, and drew against uh, Lille away from home. Tonight it was exactly the same. The mm. guy is 17. But something happens when he comes on the, on the, on the field and, uh, and you can feel it and you can see it and you just can agree to anybody who bets on that little boy is going to be exceptional, but really exceptional very soon if he's away from injuries. He just oozes superstar quality, Jules. Uh, he's incredible. I agree with Frank. I mean, he's a prodigy. This is, this is one in a generation type of player, really. When you would have seen him at 15 years old, and, and Guy Stefan, who is Didier Deschamps' first assistant with the national team, always says that he saw him as a 15-year-old first when he was playing for the under-18 at Rennes. He was, he was already two edge, playing two-edge above uh, in the, uh, the under-18 uh, French League final, if you want. And he was incredible. He was busting the game. And you had no doubt then that he could make it big. And then he made his debut with Rennes when he was 16. And every time there's a step up, he goes and, 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 and rises to it. And it's, this is incredible. He will discover the Champions League this season with Rennes. Uh, going straight into the group stage, the national team, as we said tonight, and training the whole week with the, with the squad. He played well in, in Ligue 1 the last two seasons. And, and he's, he's got that talent, but also the maturity, the intelligence. And it's an incredible story. If you, if you look into it, he, his parents and the family arrived in France from Angola, where they escaped the civil war when he was two years of age. They almost lost everything when he was 10, when their house burned in the little uh, village where they lived in Brittany, in French Brittany. And, and it's just that, that talent was there from, from, the, from a very young age. And, and I think France, again, and Rennes are very lucky to have such another prodigy kid. Frank, and a lot of hype, obviously, around Upamecano, who got his goal today, but at some times looked a little suspect at the back. Yes, and uh, it's when you want to say to our viewers that uh, playing for a club is one thing and playing for the national team is uh, something very, very much different and, uh, and, uh, and you reach another level. And, and we could see that tonight where I found Upimecano quite clumsy, uh, making silly mistakes uh, where i never seen him doing that with Leipzig and it can be only because of the pressure that you receive when you play with a national team shirt. So he's going to get better. The question mark is, um, isn't, isn't it too early for him to be with the national team? Oh, hopefully for him, no. But tonight he showed uh, lots of weaknesses at the back. Uh, when he had the ball especially, uh, lost it uh, with silly mistakes. He scored a goal, and as we say in French, it's, it's the tree who hides the forest. <laughs> but many mistakes in the forest. Uh, I like that. Um, Stevie, you're obviously a big fan of him. Where do you stand on this? Like, is it too early for him to make this step up so quickly, or do you throw him in and just see if he can swim? 
Well, I don't, I don't think you can say he's been thrown in because he's, he's, he's played the last couple of games on, on merit and deservedly so. You know, in the, in the Champions League this season, he's been outstanding. He's been one of the best centre-backs, in my opinion, uh, in the Champions League. So, you know, international football completely takes you out of your comfort zone from club football because in club football, you're playing with the same players every, every time you step on the field. It's the same system pretty much every time. When you go to international football, it changes and it takes you out of your comfort zone. And the fact that he's 21... I think is is why in these last couple of games he's been a little bit, a little bit insecure probably, um, but at the same time, I don't think it's it's ever too soon when somebody's shown the type of ability and form and the maturity at club level that he has, and and you know what, everybody's made mistakes uh, whether it's international football or domestic football, but you have to make mistakes to learn from it, and if he can play for France and he can make mistakes and they still win games, uh, then that way he's going to learn, but it's not going to affect the outcome of the game. Uh, Jules, we were speaking to Nailsman, the, uh, of course, uh, Leipzig manager, about the future of Umecano, and he said he's, he's going to stay now. I think so. I think the, the, the summer that he should have gone was last summer. There was a lot of clubs, especially in England, who were, who were keen on him. Uh, he, he since signed a new deal until until June 2023, which uh, which a much higher I think release really close than the one he had last summer for 60 million euros. So it'd be very hard now for anyone to go and get him. And if you want to get him this this summer or now, you would have to pay a lot of money and same next season. Because I agree with Stevie, I think he would get better and better. And sorry if the question was not for me, by the way. No, I, I thought it, I thought it was for me, and, and I was going to say, Dan, you know. If I'm, if I'm another team, if I'm a Man United or, or any of the big boys, I, ju I just go and get this guy. Uh, I know he's not the finita finished article, but you, but you go and get him. But I think from, from a Pumacano's point of view, another year where he is will be fantastic for him. I've already said that I think he's really matured quickly already. And, he, and he's going to be in a, in a club, in a place that he is absolutely 100% comfortable. And so in 12 months' time, with, with a, another great year behind him, uh, he will he will be more secure in himself and he'll be a better player. So, you know, it won't hurt him personally to stay there for another season. Meanwhile, Jules, of course, no killing Mbappe today. He tested positive for COVID, added to the long list now of PSG players uh, who won't be available for the start of the season. Uh, what's the reaction been like in France to this? It's been quite crazy. I mean, we've had many issues with, with players testing positive since Ligue 1 restarted in pretty much in every single club in the top flight. Uh, there's been cases. The, the protocol in France is very, very strict, far stricter than any other league that, who restarted back in June or July, for example. If you have four, test, four tested positive in your squad, whoever they could be, like young players, for example, or bench players, your game has to be postponed. Uh, which might well happen for the Thursday game between Lens and PSG, depending on, on what comes now in the next two days for Paris. But it's been bad. Obviously, the reaction, if you just look at PSG, has been strange because uh, six out of those seven players who are, have tested positive went to Ibiza on holidays straight after the Champions League final. Neymar, Paredes, Di Maria, Navas. Icardi and Marquinhos spending a lot of time together, also spending time partying there. And we know that Ibiza is a cluster for the virus right now. Mbappe went to Monaco, where there's also cases, Nico Kovac, the Monaco manager, being one of them. But, but it also shows that it's not just because you went to Ibiza, there's other players from other clubs who went there and who didn't test positive. So it's hard to blame it maybe on PSG letting their players go away to Ibiza, maybe on the players themselves going to Ibiza. I don't know, I wasn't there, I didn't see what they did. But it is really strange and, and it's just not good when you think that PSG will start their season potentially without all those seven players that I've just mentioned, or some of them at least, for the Lens game on Sunday, but more importantly for the Marseille clash on Sunday at the Velodrome. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.